Socrates' defense, a simple explanation. Introduction, Socrates, an ancient Greek philosopher, faced a momentous trial in Athens known as Socrates' defense. This event took place around 399 BC and marked a critical chapter in the history of philosophy. In this essay, we will explore the circumstances leading to the trial and charges against Socrates and his defense in a straightforward and easy to understand manner. The background. Socrates was an unique youth figure in Athens, known for his distinctive method of teaching and questioning. Instead of providing answers, he encourages people to think critically and question their beliefs. This unconventional approach earned him both admirers and critics. Over time, some influential individuals in Athens grew a suspicion of Socrates and believed his teaching could be a threat to the traditional belief of the city. The Charges Socrates faced two main charges during his trial. The first accusation was in pity, suggesting that he did not believe in the God recognized by the state and introduced new and familiar deities. The second charge accused him of corrupting the young, claiming that Socrates' teaching influenced the younger generation negatively. Socrates' defense. During the trial, Socrates defended himself by employing his famous Socratic method. Instead of offering a conventional defense, he questioned the validity of the charges and sought to demonstrate the inconsistencies in this Ecaster's argument. In pity charges, Socrates addressed the charge of impity by arguing that he did uh, believe in the gods, but had a different way of understanding them. He claimed to have a divine inner voice, or a daimonion, which guided him in making decisions. Socrates maintained that he ha ha was devoted to a higher power, and his beliefs were not intended to undermine the traditional religious practice of Athens. Corruption of Youth Regarding the charge uh, of corrupting the young, Socrates questioned how he could have influenced the young intentionally when he did not accept payment for his teaching. He argued that if he had been a professional teacher seeking financial gain, he might have been held responsible. However, Socrates insisted that he simply engaged in the philosophical conversation out of the genuine desire to stimulate critical thinking. Socratic irony Throughout his defense, Socrates employed a technique known as Socratic irony, where he pretended ignorance to draw out the contradiction in his accessor's argument. By asking probing questions, he imposed the lack of clarity and coherence in the charges against him. The verdict. Despite Socrates' eloquent defense, the jury found him guilty by a narrow margin. When he asked for his punishment, Socrates suggested that he could, should be rewarded for his service to the city, proposing free meals for life. This suggestion, instead of appeasing the jury, further fueled their frustration, leading to a more severe punishment. In conclusion, of Socrates' defense was a pivotal event in the history of philosophy. Socrates' commitment to his principles and his unique method of questioning left a lasting legacy. His trial and subsequent death by drinking poison hemlock symbolized the clash between individual philosophy inquiry and the establishment belief of society. Socrates' defense served as a timeless example of the power of critical thinking, even in the face of adversity.